FNAF fans, it's officially FNAF's 10th anniversary and Scott has left us one more thing to decode, so let's get into it. Scott took to Twitter and said this, there's one more surprise before the day is over. We will be releasing one page from the actual Five Nights at Freddy's 2 movie screenplay. Of course, it may be more interesting if it were released alongside three fake screenplay pages. It will be up to the fan base to figure out which page is real. Happy 10th anniversary. So instead of just dropping the screenplay page, Scott decided, what's better than giving us yet another mystery? Four pages. One is real. Let's get into them. So this one is page 25. It says she looks up at Toy Chica confused and Toy Chica slowly puts her hand on Abby's head. Interior, original Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria, storage room, same time. Vanessa watches the monitor through pained breaths. On the screen, Toy Chica's hand strokes Abby's head and Toy Chica's head turns slowly to look back at the camera, at Vanessa. Vanessa is squeezed tighter. She cries out in pain. Vanessa says this then, okay, okay, please just don't hurt her. The grip loosens and Vanessa watches Toy Chica look back at the computer. Vanessa continued 4AD7X. Then the interior of the original Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria office, same time. Toy Chica realized Vanessa's code culminating in Toy Chica CD1. Abby enters and looks back up. What now? And then Toy Chica says, hit enter. Abby's finger dangles above the enter key. She looks up at the animatronics for approval. Toy Chica nods and Abby presses. Click. Toy Chica's eyes light up. Toy Chica continued, you did it, Abby. We're free. I don't know about that one. That's pretty cheesy. <laughs> I don't think that's the real one. Next up, we have page 18, which says, General Everly continued, I never liked this project from the get-go. What the hell kind of idea was it for the US Army to get in bed with the pizza place? What? <laughs> Captain Nelson, Fazbear Entertainment is more than just a pizza place, sir. General Everly waving a hand. Yeah, they're a circus. That's what they are. I still can't believe the government funded this company. The men and women at the table exchange glances. They're obviously a little surprised to hear their commanding officer are expressing so many objections to their project. General Everly continued, whoever heard of testing government finance tech on robots designed to entertain kids, shaking his head. You ask me, Drummond let his sentimentality get the best of him just because his kid liked those robot animals. Captain Nelson says, Fazbear Entertainment's animatronics tech was way ahead of any robotics that General Everly snaps forward. He picks up the report and slaps it back down again. General Everly says, but we're not talking robotics now, are we? thumping at the report. This here says nothing about robotics. It's all about vortices and wave functions and the general opens his report. He flips pages and frowns at the one he lands on. General Everly continued reading observable effects of unobservable energy exchanges, lifting his gaze more. This one's definitely not real, but it's kind of funny. I mean, I would love if the government, you know, teamed up with Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, but I don't think that's the real one. Next up, we have page 58. Mike continued, why would somebody write something like that for little kids? And then Abby says, you remember how the little boy in it has all those plushies he loves, but then he gets sick with one of those diseases kids don't get much anymore? Mike says, yeah, he gets scarlet fever. And then Abby says, yeah, he's so sick he might die and he's contagious and so is everything he's touched. So they have to burn all his plushies because they're dangerous. Mike with a look of dawning understanding. Yeah, I remember the story. What are you saying, Abs? Abby says this then. I'm saying these plushies are dangerous too. Somebody should burn them. And then interior slash exterior of Mike's car at night. Mike is parked at a gas station. He takes out his phone and dials Vanessa. Vanessa's voice on the phone says, hello. Mike says, hey, are you working tonight? Vanessa says, no, I, and then Mike says, then I'll be over in half an hour. Wear dark clothing, we've got a job to do. Mike hangs up and gets out of the car. He is dressed entirely in black. This one seems a lot more plausible than the first two. So this is on our radar. Page 58, might be it, might be it. Okay, next up. Finally, we have page four. This is our last option for the real versus fake. Let's read it. The interior of the abandoned Freddy's Pizzeria and theater dining room continuous. The man and the kids step into a large dining room. Dust shrouded tables and chairs crowd the room, encircling a motionless carousel sitting in the hulking shadow. The man leads the kids onto the carousel. He steps up onto it, helping Gemma up after him. Darren looks bemused, but he hops up as well. The man reaches for a big red button, slaps the button. The carousel buzzes, lights up, starts to turn, tinny music plays. Gemma claps her hand, eyes sparkling. She looks at the carousel's animals. The carousel's characters, a brown bear, a blue bunny, a yellow chick, a pirate fox, a gator, a wolf, and a hippo. 
are all brightly colored. They're cartoonish over the top. Gemma says, a bunny! Darren making a scoffing gesture at the blue bunny. This is fake. Gemma, pouting, says, I want the bunny, daddy. The man says, we're not here for a ride, sweetie. The man takes Gemma's hand. He leads her to the center of the carousel. Darren follows. A doorway is set into the hub of the carousel. The man opens it. Beyond the door, a circular staircase descends into darkness. Man continued saying, I'll go first. Hang on to the railing. Stay close. The man starts down the staircase. He checks to be sure his kids are following. They are. This one could honestly be plausible, but the only thing is we've never heard of these characters before. Four. So if I had to guess, the real one could be this one, just because page four, this could just be our starting sequence, it starts it all, we get this as the intro thing before jumping back into Mike and Vanessa's story. This is kind of a backstory for everything that we're getting set up with here with the new characters, which would be a good starting sequence, which is why I think page four might be it. But then again, 58 seems plausible as well. Abby coming up with a plan yet again, Mike calling her abs, like it adds up two but then the burning of the plushies i mean does that really make sense for fnaf 2 i'm not sure but it could for the movie fnaf 2 so i guess we're just gonna have to find out honestly let me know down below which one you think is real number 25 18 58 or 4. also quick shout out to my channel members i love you all so much and thank you for supporting me